It's finally done. There's a lot of lights in here and this is the first time I'm filming in this makeup room, filming room slash my office. Every time I start doing this, I start sweating in my pits. I've lived here for about three months. It took three months for me to put up the wallpaper and so forth. Enough rambling, let's just get right into the purpose of this video and which is today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about my boobies. Yeah, I'm just trying to be as natural as possible, as normal Karen that you see as possible. Let's answer the first question, which is why I decided to get my breast augmentation. It's pretty straightforward. My boobs started getting a lot saggier than I would like them to. I used to be a full B, small C cup. I always kind of knew that my breasts were going to be saggy. They always sat lower and I always needed like a bra to help lift it up, but I absolutely hate wearing bras. It's just not my thing. After I turned 25, I lost so much volume at the top of my breasts and everything that was left was at the bottom bottom of my boob. It made me feel very self-conscious when I would wear a tight shirt. Essentially my body, though nobody else would notice this, it really was just myself. I felt like I had a body of like a 50 year old woman and I'm only in my late 20s. There was one photo that really made me jump the gun. It was my trip to Hong Kong. I wore this shirt and it just sat so freaking low on my body that I was like, wow, this decision was made for me a lot sooner than I thought I would need to do it. I always thought I was going to do it. It was just a matter of when. I even saw a doctor about a year and a half ago. I found Dr. Kim on Yelp and he was the best post-op photos that I've seen for Asian women that made them look very natural. It wasn't too round. It belonged on their body and I was a very confident in going with someone that understood the Asian frame, how scarring looks on us and so forth. So I was very certain about going to him and he just has a lot of great photos on his site and also on his Instagram. You can follow him on Snapchat as well. He does like live surgeries where he has an assistant to film him and he talks about the entire process. So he's a very like professional and knowledgeable doctor in Beverly Hills, which made me feel a lot more comfortable about going to him as well. Fast forward a year and a half later, I decided to do it. And I think the reason why it took me so long to really just do it was really because I was just so scared to go under. I've never done it before. And I think surgery just sounds like a scary word. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. This is for myself. It will make me so happy to look like myself again. And I was very particular about finding a doctor that works to make you look like you were born with these boobs. I did not want to go bigger than like a small C. I did it for me and it makes me really happy to have done it. I'm really proud and I'm not ashamed at all because I know some of you guys are asking, are you going to be scared of what other people think about you for getting plastic surgery? No, absolutely not because this is my body, this is my choice and this is my story that I want to share with you guys. I want to be honest and open with you guys as always on my channel and let you know like if you decide to go for it and do it, you have this video to give you a bunch of information and you'll have other videos online to give you a bunch of information. I just wanna be that person for you guys if you decide to hear my story about why I decided to get it, the entire process and so forth. This channel has always been a platform for me to share my honest and raw thoughts. It's just another thing that I wanna document in my life. So there is my why. of the boobs, all right? Cause I know this is what you guys are interested in about. If you guys are watching this video, I got a full B, small C. Because I said that to my doctor, I wanna, you know the key is to show them a lot of pictures because boob doctors don't really go by cup sizes. Cup sizes can change from brand to brand to brand. So if you bring in your pictures, bring in lots of inspo pictures, he will be able to give you the desired look that you want. I'm only 5'2", and I'm less than 100 pounds. I, I range from, 92 to 97 depending on like my diet. He recommended that I put 300 cc's in under the muscle areola incision with a moderate profile which will give me a really nice natural teardrop shape and that's what I want. I just want them to look like my own body. Price is $8,500 with Dr. Kim. I was his 5,000 540th patient since 2009. Fast forward to the day of the surgery. Hey guys, it's 5.44 a.m. in LA. We're 
are driving to Beverly Hills right now for my breast augmentation surgery. What is my mood? I'm pretty like nonchalant actually for considering how nervous I've been the last two days. And I think last night I slept like okay, not the best, but okay. I got some rest, took a bunch of showers because I'm not allowed to shower for three days. And I'm quite hungry right now because I had to stop eating past um, 10 last night, but I think I'm doing all right. I'm excited, a little bit nervous, but I'm actually excited to go back to sleep under the anesthesia right now because it's so early. I don't see you guys there. My appointment was set at 6 a.m. in the morning, you guys. I was like, oh. I'm never waking up at that early. Sometimes I sleep at 6 a.m. in the morning. At 4 a.m., two hours before surgery, you're supposed to take this pill. It's just a preparation pill. And eight hours before your surgery, you can't eat. So actually having it super early in the morning is such a great thing, you guys, because I was able to eat up until 10 p.m. the night before. So I arrived there at 6 a.m. in the morning and a really kind nurse, she was funny, asked me to change into my blue gown. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of all this because I was just so freaking nervous and I wasn't sure if I should bring my camera beyond the surgery room. I put on my blue gown, they had to take out my nose ring, they said no jewelry at all and your body has to be clean, no lotions, no soaps, no perfumes. Your nails have to be clear, which is why my nails are clear right now, so that when you get your anesthesia, the anesthesiast can monitor your nails and that's how they can tell if your levels are correct. I got my net head net on, I got my compression socks on, my feet. I climbed into this warm, heated bed. The nurse even said this, this is the worst part. And she was such a good nurse at giving me the IV. It didn't even hurt. I looked away and I felt like a little tiny pinch and then it was done, it was done. And that was it. So right now I'm just waiting for Dr. Kim to come in. I have my IV set up already. All the nutrients and goodies are in my body. This is actually really calm and pleasant. I'm really excited to go to sleep and wake up with new eyes. Dr. Kim came in promptly at 7 a.m. and she was like, hey Karen, how you doing? You know what, I'm a little bit nervous. And he was like, don't worry, it's normal to feel nervous but you won't feel a thing and before you know it, it'll be over. At that point, I was like, you know what, it's freaking 7 a.m. in the morning. I cannot wait to go back to sleep. And the nurse had mentioned that going under, it's going to be the best sleep of your life because that's what all her patients tell her. So anyway, Dr. Kim came in and he made it so comfortable for me. I had my phone still and I showed him pictures of the breast I wanted one more time, one last time. And I was wheeled into the surgery room. Now the, this bed is like metal. Didn't feel very comfortable, but it was warm, very warm. The anesthesiast was also a very warm guy. I felt like he's been doing this for a super long time. I laid flat down on my back and he goes, Karen, I want to give you something that's going to make you feel nice and comfortable. And I was like, okay. And as soon as I said, okay, the next thing I knew, I opened my eyes. I was back into the first room I was in when the nurse gave me my IV in that first bed again, nice, comfy, and warm. And I woke up with absolutely no pain at all. And I looked down and I had my sports bra on that I brought there because they asked me to bring a sports bra that you zip up from the front, some compression on to keep swelling down. And she sat me onto a wheelchair and rolled me down to the, the garage downstairs and Leo picked me up. They helped me into the car and that was that. I even snapped. Hey guys, the surgery is over. And that was like a piece of cake actually. I went to sleep, I woke up, I got new boobs. This was a really great experience. So just a little update on how I'm feeling right now. It's a little bit sore all over, but it's not painful. It's just uncomfortable. Um, I'll keep you guys updated as I go through the day. This was the bed that I was on earlier. It was heated, so it was super comfortable. And all the nurses and doctors here were so kind. Um, they dressed me and it was such a pleasant experience. By the time I was done, it was only 10.30, so he was quick. I'm gonna talk about my first week of recovery. Everyone's recovery is different because everyone's body is different. My body tends to heal very quickly. My hair, my nails, everything like just grows 
twice as fast as everyone else's and so is my metabolism it's just really quick i think for me my recovery was really smooth and i was able to walk and do things pretty pretty quickly and i regained my energy pretty quickly all right you guys this is um day one of post-operation yesterday i call it day zero because that was the day i went under surgery if you guys want to follow my snapchat oh wait i'm not on snapchat i'm on instagram wow that Vicodin is hitting me right now. I feel so dizzy. But anyway, yesterday, if you guys have been following me on Instagram stories, oh, I feel out of breath a little bit. I'm gonna do this really quick. I was feeling great yesterday. I didn't really feel any pain and it must have to do with like, I still had residual anesthesia in my body and also been taking my Vicodin very regularly to control my pain. Occasionally I took Tylenol um, when the Vicodin was a little too strong, kind of like what's doing to me right now. Um, so yeah, but yesterday was generally pretty good. Now today I woke up with like, oh, it was a super sore chest. From what I heard from like other experiences and what I've read online and have watched like so many YouTube clips is that the first day of post-op is the worst for everybody. and. Um, they tend to not be able to even move or walk. Right now, I took my first dose of Vicodin, like, I want to say like 15, 15, 20 minutes ago with my first dose of antibiotics for today. And I'm feeling pretty woozy. Like, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm quite out of it right now. Mm, I'm, st no, I'm starting to feel that I'm not feeling so much pain, like obvious pain on my breast now. Um, but I gotta say, they are extremely swollen, I think. I mean, I can't tell because I have to keep my bra, sports bra on for like three days straight without taking it off. And I also have like a compression bandage over my armpits right now. Um, I did take it off one time, like just unzipped and looked. It looks very, very, actually really natural. Um, like at most a normal C, but closer to a small C cup. Um, where was I going with this? Yeah, I'm out of it. I should go back to sleep right now. But yeah. Leo on the other hand has been such a gem. He brushed my hair this morning because those are the movements that I can't make right now or even take off my pants or put it back on. Like any movement that you imagine you can do normally on a daily basis, there's a lot that you can't do. So you're gonna have to have someone that like cares a lot about you take care of you because you're basically a princess the first couple of days. Anyway, there's my little check-in and okay, ciao for now. Now I'm also keeping all your questions and your username anonymous because some of you guys have asked me to keep it anonymous so i'm just going to keep it consistent do i plan on getting any more surgery no that's definitely not a plan of mine to get any more surgery i've never thought of getting anything done except for my breast as of now i'm, I'm gonna say no but then again like people change a lot so who knows but now i'm really happy with where i'm at I'm really happy with my new boobs. They look amazing already. I just can't wait for them to settle into how Dr. Kim has envisioned them to look like. That, I was gonna call him a fool again. No, fool is an endearing word to me. That guy is an artist. And I don't gotta wear a motherfucking bra anymore, you guys. Like, maybe some nipple tape if I don't want my nips to be hanging out. I'm really glad I don't have to wear a bra anymore. They're just gonna sit nice and high. <sighs> The joys. So this is the end of my video. I hope I answered all of your guys' question. Feel free to leave any more questions in the comment section below because um, I will do my very best to respond to every single one of you guys. I know it really, really helps so much when I watched people on YouTube getting breast augmentation, answering questions, being really honest about their entire procedure. So I hope this helps you if you guys are curious or are thinking about it, you're afraid to do it. Hopefully this gives you some, some sense of security. Like I was freaking afraid I waited a full and a half year to do it. But now if you were to ask me if I would do it again, yes, I would because it really, really was not that bad. Thank you so much for watching. You know, you know, you know, you know. All right, I'm good. And that's it.
Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.